Well, we woke up early today at 6 a.m. and both of us were tired. My hand was hurting, so I took a Vicodin and we fell asleep again for another three hours. This guy won't leave my side. Well, I mean, literally, this is actually this is the first time he's technically left my side because about for the last two hours, I've had his face laying across my neck. Look at those teeth. My buddy, keeping me company. My buddy, keeping me company. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, I was telling my grandpa yesterday on the phone all the things that I never thought of that I was going to have to deal with without being able to use one hand, like doing my hair, taking a shower, putting my pants on because I wear jeans, so buckling the belt buckle and buttoning the pants and zipping up the pants and... Man, tying shoes, it's all a challenge. Now I'm glad I had a pair of shoes that the tread's worn out, and I was going to throw them away, and I just haven't, and now I'm glad I didn't because they're about the only pair of shoes I can slip on. So, uh, the challenges that affront you in your day. I'm realizing different ones every day, little by little every time. So, uh, the coping, man. You're spoiled. <laughs> He's like, not me. Just well loved. No. Puppy playtime. Well, Carrie and her husband Ben are going to come by and pick me up and uh, take me out to do the vlog and to the grocery store and to get some food and stuff. So I guess that'll be my adventure for the day. And this guy's going to have to hang out here. Unfortunately. All right, we're here. And uh, what we're actually going to check out today is um, we're on Highland Avenue, right below Melrose. And... Um, Back in the early 30s, this is where Mo Howard, or Mo Horowitz, Moses Horowitz, and Jerome Horowitz, Jerome Howard, Jerry Howard, Curly Howard, two of the Three Stooges lived. I want to tell you a little bit about how they came to be. See, to the casual fan of the Three Stooges, you may not know the whole story, and really the story is pretty deep. The Stooges were actually founded by a guy named Ted Healy. And Ted Healy lived in the neighborhood with Sam Howard, which, well, their real last names were, was Horowitz. Mo, Shemp, and Curly were all brothers with the last name of Horowitz that they changed professionally to Howard. So we'll be referring to them as Howard. So Ted Healy was a vaudeville comedian. He put together these stooges that would basically heckle his act and disrupt his act, and that became the act. And Ted Healy was the star, and he would pay the Stooges accordingly, as like sub-actors. And this was actually Moe's house. For a very brief time in the early 30s. Now what happened was, um, the original group was Ted Healy, Shemp, and Moe. But Shemp didn't like Ted Healy that much because Ted Healy constantly was playing pranks and he was a well-known Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde drinker. So Shemp left the group and went on to be um, a star in his own right, actually getting his own deal and making like 100 pictures in the time that um, he left the Stooges and would eventually come back and fill in for Curly. But this was Moe's house, and um, Ted Healy got the deal, or he got a deal with RKO, and was still paying the Stooges pretty cheaply, so the Stooges actually got an offer from Fox to leave and go off on their own, and they were going to be 
Howard Fine and Howard. But what happened was Ted Healy found out about it, went to Fox, blew a gasket, and got the deal canceled. And so he ends up, the Stooges leave him, go off and start making um, some shorts around town under Howard Fine and Howard that don't really go anywhere. Ted Healy gets his own Stooges, he replaces the Stooges, has three new guys that are Stooges. After a while, they eventually decide they want to go off on their own. Ted Healy gets the original Stooges to come back, and that has Curly, Mo, and at this point, Larry. So Ted Healy ends up now getting a new deal with the boys as we know it. They're not still not called the Three Stooges. It's still called Ted Healy and the Stooges. Gets a deal at MGM. They star in a Clark Gable movie. Um, well, they don't star in it, but they're in a Clark Gable movie with Joan Crawford called The Dancing Lady. And then MGM ends up using the Stooges in like six different pictures throughout the year. And um, after a while, same thing happened. The Stooges got tired of being underpaid and they got tired of Ted Healy's drinking, so they left off on their own once and for all. And went off to Columbia. Made a short for Columbia. While Columbia was deciding whether they wanted to sign him and give him a contract or not, the boys wrote another script, turned it in to Columbia. Columbia loved it and signed him for seven years. So while the Three Stooges were with MGM, Mo lived here and Curly lived here. And Curly lived here for about four years before eventually moving, before eventually moving up the road a block away. Now Curly's really interesting because Curly was the baby. He was six years younger than Mo and he and Mo were extremely tight their whole life. And um, so when Shemp decided to leave the group because he didn't like Ted Healy, um, he was really, the only caveat he had was he was worried about what would happen to the Stooges and Mo. And Mo said, don't worry, we'll get Babe to come. That's what they always called Curly. His nickname was Babe. They called him that his whole life. They called up Babe and said, hey, do you want to be part of the act? But Ted Healy and Mo agreed that Curly's look just didn't look right. Curly had brown wavy hair, he had a mustache, um, he was heavy, and um, so Mo says, you know, we don't know about your look, and Curly said, don't worry about my look, I'll take care of it. Half an hour later he comes back, and as Mo said, he was, he was uh, as bald as uh, an eggplant. And that became Curly's look. The Three Stooges would go on to Columbia. They would make uh, movies with Columbia for 24 years before Columbia would decide to get rid of their shorts department and then just lock them out. They just canceled their contract and locked them out of the studio. Never threw a going away party, never um, even allowed them to get the rest of their belongings out of the studio. Once their contract was up, they were completely um, nil and void from the lot. Unbelievable. And actually, they would go on for, until 1946, Curly would be one of the Three Stooges until he suffered a series of strokes. And actually, right before filming the last scene on the last um, short that he made it as a Stooge, he was sitting in the director Jules Verne's chair and had a stroke, and um, that was the end. He spent the next few years recovering. Um, Shemp took over in the agreement that he was going to be there as long as uh, it took Curly to recover. But Curly came back for one episode as a, like um, as like an extra. He had hair and everything. You wouldn't have recognized him if you didn't know um, that he was in it. And um, he had another stroke shortly afterward and never returned to being a stooge. But we're going to go over and see the house that once they signed with Columbia... Curly immediately moved into this house and lived there for the next 10 years. Well, this is not it, but this is abandoned, so if, uh, if anybody's looking for a mansion over here on Highland, there's one available. 
Now the house that we're going to next is actually, this was Curly's house for a long time. Curly was a long time resident of living on Highland because Columbia Pictures was right down the street and all those movies that they filmed on Largemont were also right down the street. So this is a pretty convenient place and unfortunately his, uh, his life did not go out the way you would expect it to. You see somebody like Curly and you would think that he's the life of the party, but he was actually a very shy guy. And they said when he wasn't filming um, a scene, he would kind of just disappear and um, would go off and like not talk to anybody. He would, he would just take off into uh, his dressing room or whatever. He ended up having four wives throughout his life and uh, had a massive love for dogs. They said every time the Stooges would go off on the road, um, when they weren't filming to promote anything, Curly would come back with another dog. He had a massive collection of dogs. And this was actually his home, right here. This was the longest home that he actually had in his life. He lived here from 1934 until 1940. And there's quite a few pictures of him in the backyard here with his dogs and smoking cigars and... There it is. The home of Curly from the Three Stooges. Sorry, this is an extremely loud neighborhood. I'm trying to show you a little bit, get out of this sun glare, but there's Curly's house. Now this neighborhood is like, there's, this is a major traffic way, so there's always tons of traffic here. It wouldn't have been like that back in their day. And sorry this video is all over the place. I'm just trying to get it in between big darts of oncoming traffic going back and forth through the streets because actually they lived only a block away. Curly and Mo lived across the street from each other so kind of gives you a relative idea. They always stayed in the same block. Now when Curly actually moved up here, Mo actually moved quite a, a distance away so they only lived across from each other for a short time, like one or two years. Well they brought me out to Andre's. I haven't been here in over 10 years and they mentioned it and I was like, yeah, I'm in. It's like an Italian cafeteria almost, but it's always packed. Yeah, there's a bit of a line. This is actually nothing for this. Yeah. You don't see that too often anymore. Cash only. All right, we finally made it up to the front. The inner workings. And my chicken sandwich. Well, the food is pretty awesome, I do have to say. Well, gang, thanks for watching the vlog today. I came home and uh, took a pain pill, fell asleep, and I've just Seems like every time I take one of those, it makes me fall asleep, so I'm sorry I didn't get to do a whole lot of vlogging today, but uh hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll uh, I'll definitely go. Larry Fine only ever owned one home. He liked to live in hotels, and for a long time, like 15 years, he lived in the Knickerbocker, which I've already been to, but at some point, I'll go to the one house that he did live in, and hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of Three Stooges history. I love them, and uh, I'll definitely be exploring a lot more of it. Um, some more history about Ted Healy, some more history about where they're all buried. I'll go into more life history, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, from your old pal Jordan the Lion, I'm going to call it a night. Um, I'm getting cabin fever, and I'm getting a little bummed, so call it a night, and I'll uh, see you guys tomorrow. Have a great Memorial Day, guys. Good night.